Do not doubt in expressing your doubts to the Lord. To doubt is not always looked at a negative in the Bible's point of view. On the contrary, it became a path to become a true believer. Because we cannot do it alone, nor should we. Welcome to our devotional, Mana, where we listen to and obey God's word. Okay, we have about one month left for you to be able to register to our second world conference in Armenia, Colombia. And so if you're truly interested in joining us, do not miss this opportunity. There aren't that many spots available. So if God has placed that, placed this in your heart to participate in something that will edify you spiritually, because God has a banquet prepared for you and for your family. You need to remember, log in to our webpage, devotionalmana.com. And there you will see information on our World World Conference, along with instructions of how to register and make payment. Okay, we arrive to one of the most interesting phrases of this passage that we are studying of Jesus calling Peter to step out of the boat. As we discussed, first, this was a calling for Peter on behalf of Jesus. And Peter obeys this calling. And Peter walks on water. Then, Peter begins to sink in the water. And we discussed why we sink, why we easily fall. And Jesus immediately corrects Peter when he begins to sink. He says to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? And in one of the devotionals, we spoke about how, after this, they both climbed into the boat. So when he said this to Peter, it was in private. And so more than reprimanding him what we should see is that Jesus works in these areas of our lives where we have difficulties because God wants us to grow so do not be afraid of having doubts in fact allow me to tell you it is normal for the devil to consistently sow doubt in our heart throughout our Christian life for example perhaps we're reading scripture and then thoughts come into our mind where we may say What if everything that is written is not true? Sometimes we doubt God's love, or we believe that we do not deserve His love, or that we are foreigners for God. Or if God loves us, why are things not going well for us? There are some who doubt on the work of Christ and question why Jesus had to come and die, not believing in everything they say about Jesus or that terrible sacrifice. Many doubts can come into our hearts because remember, These are the enemy's darts. When we look at the scene of of the Garden of Eden, the first attack of the serpent towards Adam and Eve was to say, I think God does not really love you. He tells them God is not as good as you think because if he were good and if he wanted what was best for you, then he would allow you to eat from the fruit of this tree because he knows if you eat of this fruit, then you will be like him, your eyes will open and you will know good and evil and so we will always be bombarded by doubt last month we talked about revelations about the last times the last days and there is often doubts doubts of whether or not this will come true is there really an afterlife does heaven and hell really exist or is this just a story something someone made up but scripture says let's go to the book of james chapter 1 in James in chapter 1 verses 6 through 8 here in the same way he wants to speak about this aspect in our lives so let's read what God's word says he says but when you ask you must believe and not doubt because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind so here James defines truly the problem with doubt and I insist we must see doubt as part of what we face each day in in our growth and maturity as Christians. So do not see it as something strange or something that is totally bad. No. When we see it, we, we must use it to grow. But when the doubt persists, the Bible says, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. But the problem with doubt is that it does not allow us to continue stable. Doubt often doesn't let us march towards the objective because we we are constantly thinking of whether or not it is worthwhile. Or perhaps many of you have prayed to God and God has not answered the prayers the way you've asked. 
and this has caused your faith to be affected. Here in Mana, we have talked about how God does not always need to answer our prayers because our prayers are not always according to God's will. But this should not cause my faith to dwindle because the fact of whether or not God answers my prayer does not mean that God doesn't love me, nor whether or not I am his son. Of course not. So based on this, there is something that we should work on in the day to day, just as we are bombarded over and over again to not believe, to not trust, to turn and look back. For example, look at what King David says, and this calls my attention greatly, because all the men of the Bible, even those who were the most firm, were attacked, bombarded in their faith. And look at how interesting what Psalm 13 says. Psalm 13 begins with a shout of anguish filled with doubt. It says, How long, Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts? And day after day have sorrow in my heart. How long will my enemy triumph over me? So as you notice here, these words truly express the psalmist's doubt and unconformity in his heart. But pay close attention to the detail here. Instead of avoiding God or pretending that he was not in tribulation, David approaches God admitting his doubts and his frustrations. And then we see it. In verses 5 and 6, he says, But I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise, for he has been good to me. Glory to God. Glory to God. So do you see, I love God's word, because God's word clarifies our doubts. And so here we have a man of flesh and bones living what he lived. And despite his doubts, and he was passionate in expressing them to God, this was not a reason to separate him from God. And this is what you must not allow with doubts. When you are attacked, bombarded, do not allow your doubts to separate you from the Lord. Do not allow your doubts to diminish your life of prayer. Do not allow your doubts to impede you from obeying God and his word. On the contrary, may you always continue to rectify what David confirms in the song that I trust in his great love and I trust what he has in store for me. This is how it works. And this is how God works. There's another very interesting passage. Do you remember the man who took his son to the Lord because he was demon possessed? And of course, when the troubled father shared the details of his son's condition with Jesus, this passage is in Mark 9 verses 21 through 24. Here there is a conversation. The man says, Lord, my son, is in this condition. And look at what the man says to the Lord. He says, But if you can do anything, take pity on us. If you can, said Jesus, everything is possible for one who believes. And immediately the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. And Jesus healed his son. This passage is very interesting as it relates to the topic we're discussing of why Peter, after having walked on water, begins to sink and the Lord says ye of little faith why did you have doubt and so doubt in a determined moment comes and tries to penetrate our faith and bombard us attack us to weaken our faith did you know that faith can be weakened there's a passage in Romans 4 where the apostle Paul telling the story of Abraham says that while Abraham was of an advanced age of a hundred years in knowing that his wife Sarah was sterile, he says his faith was not weakened. And so do you see, once again, the key point here is that, is that independently of the doubts that attack our hearts day after day, we must persist because you will feel many doubts in your heart telling you, I'm not capable, I can't, I can't trust fully in God or in certain people, doubts and more doubts. But do you know what it says in Romans 4? It says that Abraham was strengthened, giving glory to God. Abraham did not feed his doubts. Instead, he strengthened his faith. And the great task we have as Christians each day is to strengthen our faith. In this dialogue between the Father and Jesus regarding his Son, well, perhaps the Father did not know Jesus well, his authority, his power. So he says, if you can do something, Lord, 
And the Lord replies, What do you mean if I can do something? So in this expression that Jesus mentions that states, If you can, he's basically saying this is no longer in my hands. Because I can, I am the Almighty God. But now it is really up to you. You have to believe. And I would end this devotional this morning saying this to you. If you are asking the Lord this morning, Lord, if you can do this, if you can, allow the Lord to speak to you this morning and tell you, I can, I am the Almighty God, and I can do many things in your life. But the Lord said to this man, you must believe, because God can, and so let's allow the Holy Spirit to work in us. This is why it's so important for you to get up each morning to strengthen your faith. Read God's Word, because if you carry out this task of strengthening your faith. Remember that Romans 10, 17 says that faith comes from hearing the message and the message is heard through the word about Christ. But I do want to wrap up this morning with telling you, do not strengthen your doubts. Do not feed your doubts. What you need to do is to strengthen your faith because doubting in itself is not bad. But if you strengthen it, if you feed it and give it wings, then you will end up with disbelief and skepticism. I give thanks to God because I know that God is speaking to your hearts and God is working in many of you this morning because we have a, we have great problems related to doubt, doubt of God and of his word and of the marvelous miracles that he performs each day. Okay, today is the 93rd day of the year and our suggested reading is Genesis 49. Here you will find a fascinating story about the blessings of Israel to those who will later become the 12 tribes of Israel and what they will eventually represent in the future. And so this story is worthwhile because when we look, when we read this story, it talks to us about truly what the blessings are in the context of the blessing that God gave Abraham for all generations, all ages, through the ages. Okay, pray with me to commend this day to the Lord. Father, thank you for this morning. I know that the hearts of many of your children this morning have doubts, but I want them to understand that we all have doubts. Even the greatest men of faith had doubts because the devil is continuously attacking us, looking for us to turn back and no longer trust God as our guide, as a provider, as our sustainer. But today, through this devotional this morning, I have understood that instead of strengthening my doubts, I must strengthen my faith, listening to God's word and allowing it each day to strengthen me and give me the trust to believe in the only one and true God. The Lord said to Peter, Peter, you climbed out of the boat. Peter, you walked on water. And now you doubt? But not just this. The problem is not that you doubted Peter. The problem is you fed your doubts in this moment. And this caused you to sink into the water. May God speak to your heart this morning. And may God bless you today. May he guard everything you do and begin. May God's good hand shepherd you, guide you, and show you the path to follow. May God's word make you a wise man, a wise woman this day and may God fill you with grace and wisdom in your plans and projects. May God's blessing rest upon all of you and may his grace accompany you always in Christ Jesus. Amen and amen and I await for you tomorrow. Blessings to all.